Hey guys, welcome back, and we now got the Felon King and the Standoff. Let's do the Felon King first. It was the middle of the night, and the full moon was high up in the sky. A group of cats were gathering in the empty lot near the street. They were both house cats and stray cats. They formed a circle around a big empty pipe in the centre of the lot. On top of a pipe sat a fat black cat, who was giving his usual speech. It was unsurprising about how humans pet dogs, and how what we should do to make our humans like us more. Those two-legged walking monkeys only considered dogs to be smarter than cats because dogs would fetch newspapers for them. But the truth was the opposite. Why would she bother baking with human humans who couldn't even tell cats were smarter than dogs to like us? I turned a dead sparrow in front of me around, making sure there was nothing edible left. No matter how many times I tried, the taste of the organ was still disgusting to me. Ugh. I puked out one of a puddle of a little uh, liquid. A couple of house cats nearby sprinted away from me. <laughs> Pusses. Blackie, with fat black cat, kept rambling on with his boring and pointless speech. Picking my teeth and my claws, suddenly felt a chill in the air. It was already late autumn, so it would be the worst season for stray cats. So I was one year old now, almost twenty in human years. So I was fairly strong, so lots of homeless cats had died my age. So I wasted my time figuring out how to please them as monkeys had rather be preparing for the winter. That pipe seemed like a good place to use as shelter. I walked towards Blackie and jumped up towards a pipe. Every shining eye stared at me, including Blackie's. He completely forgot what I was talking about. Excuse me, may I lie down here for a bit? You may keep going. You thought I would say that. <laughs> Winner take all, that's the loser loses it all. And I spotted wanted it all. I said a blackie and puffed on my fur. That's right. Overwhelming my opponent is the way I do it. He raised a dry started fish. I spat on his face. Black was surprised by my spit, but immediately swung the salted fish and hit my face with it. So now this piece of dry salted fish represented an unquenchable authority. Whoever had a dry salted fish was the leader of the cats. Furthermore, whoever was attacked by a dry salted fish, which right now was me, we consider a public enemy of the entire cat clan. A dozen cats sprung at me, biting my ears, clawing my paws, tipping on my back. Humans have been saying two fists were no match for four hands. I was facing 40 claws. Ow! Meanwhile, the warehouse looked like a scene from hell. Bodies lying all over the ground. Lieutenant Kang's eyes were cold and ice. He looked like nothing like himself anymore. He turned around slowly, stared at me as if I was the only bug. What happened? Was he putting a prank on me? But he looked entirely seriously when he killed Choi Yohan with one blow. Or rather, was it some kind of in initiation test? A test I had to pass to become an official member of Unit 4. My brain was still completely disorientated when a body jumped backwards by instinct. Still nothing left from Lieutenant Stare. Except deadly menace. There's no prank nor a test. I could feel what was standing in front of me at the moment was not a normal human but a dangerous beast. I was waiting for me to expose my vulnerability just so he could lunge at me and tear out my throat. Both standing dead still. We were both staring deep into each other's eyes. We were both thinking of a best way to prevail. Didn't have enough confidence. Even at the Shaolin Temple. I'd never faced an opponent like this before. Nevertheless, I began to feel something. Not because of my training of a temple. I was feeling nothing but growing excitement, and I was eager to give it all my all in this fight. It's almost as if I'd been waiting for this day my whole life. It would not to be any good to keep struggling like this, so I decided to at least poke my opponent first. World of Kung Fu, speed determines the winning. Tied to fight. He raised a gun. He flung, I flung my tail out as hard as I could. I took a shot and flung my tail out from my sleeve. The spear head cut through the air with shimmer, aimed at Lieutenant Kang's right hand, which was holding his gun. But it stopped right before it hit the Lieutenant. His left hand clenched into a fist and so lowered it. He was holding my tail firmly in his hand. Despite having been cut by a spear tip, blood was dripping from his wrist. Behind his fist, his eyes were staring at me with nothing but contempt. No one had been able to stop my tail with their bare hands before. At this point, I had no choice but to drop my weapon. But he had finally seen, had his chance. He sprinted at me, still holding my tail in his left hand and his gun in his right. Then I heard a gunshot before I sank into an infinite darkness, filled with nothing but regret. A few weeks later, I woke up in the ICU of Bissan Metropolitan Hospital. I was incredibly lucky to survive to a shot to my head. 
However, a bullet lodged inside my skull in a delicate spot, so doctors could not take it out. As a result, I had to enjoy occasional migraines for the rest of my life. In my health condition, I thought that I would be assigned to some bombing post like the archives. But I didn't expect them to ask me to resign. The police paid me a lot of money to compensation. That was not what I wanted. I wanted to be a police officer. How can everything turn out like this? Interesting. Ah, a piece of dried fish and a gun. I think I could up with something funny here. I can really just switch them like this. How could a cat be holding a gun? Of course, that's what our power is. No matter what, the events will unfold exactly according to your arrangement of a text. Even if it's something ridiculous or even supernatural. It's still realm of reasonable for us. That's how we were able to help Jimmy's class with a relay race. We were able to switch Jimmy from a last leg to a third leg, remember? As long as the internal logic of the story is not self-contradictory, there won't be any problems. In any case, what kind of logic should we consider self-contradictory? For example, earlier we discussed that someone fainted or died, you would not be able to perform any additional actions. Therefore, any additional actions after a piece or subject passed out would automatically disappear. Okay. I think I got it. So you both got tails. This will be fun. You got a fish, mate. Let's see what you do. A dried salted fish flew out of his right hand, charging towards me like a flash of light. Wait, a salted fish? I quickly moved aside and dodged it. Well, now you miss your chance. It's my turn. Huh? I soon realised my right hand was tangled up. I looked back and saw it swinging a pin my ribbon on my tail to a wall. The dried salted fish I'd just dodged. Had he done it on purpose? Well, to be able to pin my ribbon on the dried salted fish? What amazing power and accuracy he had. I hesitated for a second and I exposed myself before I could turn back, a shadow had fallen over me. And I had, I had a heavy punch. I lost. Black was surprised by my spit. He barely had a gun at me and pulled the trigger. Meow. Wait. Why did he have a gun? <laughs> Number of sound echoed across a lot. A few windows in the nearby neighbourhood lit up. All the cats were scared shitless. A paralyzed woman stood. And I was suddenly filled with a filthy smell, smell of urine. I left the lot and felt my own ears, realising one of them had a hole in it. I thought to myself, perhaps I should go get a gun too. What? Um. Okay. I took a shot, flung my tail out from my sleeve. Spear had cut through the eye with shimmer, aimed at Lieutenant Kang's right hand, but it stopped right before the Lieutenant. Left hand clenched in his fist, low so he lowered it. He was on my tail firmly in his hand. High his fist. His eyes were staring at me with nothing but contempt. No one been able to stop my tail with my bare hands before. At this point I had no choice but to drop my weapon. He spit it over to me, still holding my tail in his left hand, and a dried soldered fish in his right hand. There's a fish high from the air, and slapped it down to my face, it was a hammer. A loud crisp lap, I fell to the ground with a ship fish shaped mark in my face. My consciousness had began to drift away. I lost. Let's try that, shall we? You just raise a gun, I'm gonna spit on him. My split flew into his eyes and temporarily blinded him. I thought it would be up hand with Lieutenant Kang swiftly left, held up his left hand based on nothing but his hearing. I flung my tail towards him, hoping I'd land a surprise attack, but it was stopped by his bare hand. He was holding a spear firm, spearhead firmly in front of him. Okay, yeah, we know what this is going to happen. He spins it towards me. I raised the fish high in the air. And I lost. What are you going to do with a gun? Meow. A gun? 
I had no idea where Blackie had even got a gun from. I couldn't believe he had a gun got to pull the trigger. Kept staring at Blackie, trying to scare him off. He was staring right back at me. The sun had come out. All spectating cats had fallen asleep a long time ago. But Blackie was still staring at me, his eyes wide open, and he had tired black bags around them. How could I tell he had black bags around his eyes? I just could. Shut up. When I gave up, I couldn't hold it any longer. I needed to pee. This is a big country. I'm sure I could always find a big empty pipe. Empty a bigger, better pipe, no less. <laughs> this is... This is bizarre. Okay. I slammed my tail on a pipe. Bang! It was a battle cry. Blackie was in shock. It was probably the first time any cat had ever challenged him. He nervously pulled the trigger. Wait. Why do you have a gun? Remember the sound echoed across a lot. A few windows in a nearby neighbourhood lit up. Cats scattered as far as they could, including Blackie. Only I was still sitting atop the pipe in the empty lot. And my urine was dripping down from a pipe. In any case, this is my territory now. My spit flew into his eyes and temporarily blinded him. I thought I had the upper hand while Lieutenant Kang swiftly swung at me with his right hand, based on something but his hearing. It was an easy opponent, but that's for sure. A dried sort of fish flew out of his right hand, charging towards me like a flash of light. Wait. A started fish? I quickly moved aside and dodged it. Thank god it was just a dried sorted fish. Well, now you've missed your chance. It's my turn! I stopped on the ground and sprinted forward. I tightened back my back muscles and rotated my shoulder. I swung my arm with a shoulder, finally punching him with my fist. Attack number three. Thunderbolt punch! Hit Lieutenant Kang straight in his chest. He flew backwards and slammed into a pillar. Finally, I could tell he would be dreaming about butter for a while. I wiped sweat on my face and let out a long breath. I had avoided hitting Lieutenant's critical spots with a punch earlier. So I knew he should be okay. But what kind of person was he? I never realised I'd witnessed not one but two masters in my Busan police prison today. The custodian for armory and Lieutenant Kang. How interesting. I suppose it wouldn't be too bad to stay in Unit 4 then. I'd love to spar with Lieutenant in the future. That's got me a double S. Yep. Okay, interesting story about the um, fish. For now, though, I'm going to check my mail. Natasha, how about you? Uh, 1200cc. West got me thinking about bikes, doesn't it? Bike or a car? Oh well, until next time, because I'm going to end it here, guys. Another short one, but I think we're all out of excitement of cat and fish, haven't we? Until then, thanks for watching, guys. Have a wonderful day, and bye bye.